so Update 2.0 and Phantom Liberty are finally both here. And with them comes essentially an entire set of new and improved mechanics. Things which we have to learn and relearn to get the most out of the game now. Different perk trees, cyberware and new weapons to name but the most basic fundamentals. So this means of course it's time to retrace our steps and break down in detail once again the core gameplay components of Cyberpunk 2077. And at almost a year to the day I figured it only fitting to kick this new series off with the now top and only five Sandevistons technically which we can acquire in the game, weighing up the pros and cons of each before deciding once and for all which is best. Bearing in mind that whilst this is a ranking, it's also just a dive into some of the new best ways Sandys can be used in 2.0. So let's get to it. As always with these rankings, let's quickly establish the build I used when conducting most of my research, to help explain exactly why my gameplay appears the way it does, and also possibly give you some tips as to what to use with the Sandeviston. I first used the perfectly balanced set of attributes here to experience the Sandevistons alongside a variety of effects, but bear in mind on very hard difficulty especially, you'll have a much better time more heavily specking into just three attributes, unlocking more of what each has to offer. From body, I took several perks from the central node, not to help with the sandy per se, but to help us stay alive once it runs out. Some shotguns also pair well with Sandevistons now, in which case you'll want to grab up some shotgun related perks too. In reflexes, air dash and maneuvering in general is not only great for combat, but also the best way to get around on foot, especially in Dogtown. Blades have always been a staple Sandeviston pairing, and they're going to be again here. Onto tech, and this central node will help boost our cyberware capacity, which is going to be especially useful for the Sandys at the top of this list. Cool has many items of interest, with perks from the Deadeye Tree improving damage with powerful single shot weapons, now much more viable with the Sandeviston, whilst the Ninjutsu Tree will help us duck out of combat when needing to recharge, especially when paired with the Emergency Cloaking perk from the Relic Tree. Also, the Road Warrior Car perk is going to be crucial if you want to use the Sandeviston in cars too, whilst perks and throwable weapons are also great if you can afford them since there's some really cool new knives and tomahawks to try out in Phantom Liberty and 2.0. Finally, intelligence can be left more or less empty, a tree best reserved for cyberdex unless for some reason you just love to sport smart weapons which are now tied with that tree. And finally, also in the relic tree, vulnerability analytics can provide a much more explosive alternative than always aiming for the head, by highlighting specific weak spots on different enemies. Now with that done, it's on to cyberware. So again here, not saying this is what you have to use, but I do find these items pair particularly well with the Sandeviston especially. So in Frontal Cortex we have the Newton module, or alternatively the overpowered but much more expensive Axolotl, which reduces Sandy cooldown every time you neutralize an enemy. Kerenzikov is also going to sit in as a useful alternative when waiting on cooldown, with the Kerenzikov boost system therefore helping us to aim with that. Also, the Defensikov will help us take less damage after using Kerenzikov. Kov. With Kuroshis, maybe grab something simple to free up cyberware capacity, since the best Sandevistons on this list come at a heavy, heavy cost to that. That said, if you're playing on very hard, then something like the Second Heart can provide a second chance when you get into a tight spot. Equally, the Blood Pump is by far superior to Inhalers, and defo worth grabbing up too. For hands, I'm not going to be using smart weapons, so no point bothering with Smart Link, but I can recommend the Micro Generator. Now, a hand mod which works like electric cherry when reloading an empty weapon. Particularly useful if you're sporting something with low ammo, like the Comrade's Hammer or equivalent. Optical Camo is of course crucial alongside the perks I've picked here, whilst finally reinforced tendons will make you even more maneuverable than the already OP air dash. Of course, take this whole thing as basic guidelines, and I'll have detailed guides on all cyberware releasing in the coming weeks slash months. But now, it's on to the Sandevistons, and I gotta tell ya, think Things done changed. Down at the bottom then is the still acceptable but nonetheless overall inferior Dynalar Sandeviston, slowing time by 50% i.e. half normal speed and providing a varying extra crit chance and crit damage, 5% at tier 2 and 15% at tier 5. Now a good thing about this one is its tier 2 variant can be unlocked very early in the game, from about level 10. It also very much lends itself to more offensive builds, offering a not great but not terrible time slowing effect alongside 
upgrade its booster crit stats, and the cost of 18 cyberware capacity is relatively conservative compared to others, and mostly fair for what you get. Now, as I said though, Sandeviston's done changed. No longer are you forced to endure the entire duration of a Sandeviston in one go, instead being able to toggle it off again at any given time, and then only have to recover the amount of overall charge that you used. So, when facing an enemy, you could say line up a shot, activate Sandy time for boosted accuracy and crits, then quickly turn it off again after firing. This feature not only makes these things more versatile in combat now, but also makes them much more gun friendly when used properly. Whilst previously, the most effective way to use that full duration was with, say, a katana, since melee wasn't beholden to the speed of regular time in the same way that guns were. Automatic weapons still aren't brilliantly effective with Sand Everstons, which is why I first took a combo of Her Majesty, the stealth pistol you unlock during Phantom Liberty, then Lyca, which is found in airdrops and functions like the Comrade's Hammer but fires explosive rounds which can't penetrate walls, and finally Gwynblythe, because an actual Witcher Sword is both awesome and still super effective with a Sand Everston. So why is the Dynalar at the bottom of the list? Well, firstly, acquiring the Tier 2 version in the early game is gonna land you with a 55 second cooldown, a long time to wait, even bearing in mind that method of using it little and more often. With a maximum duration of 8 seconds, 9 at higher levels, that means the Sandy only activates for about a sixth of the time. Definitely not the most useful on the list. Though this can be lowered to 30 seconds at the absolute maximum tier, and using the new attunement mechanic, we can also increase the duration by an extra 0.1 of a second for each point we have in reflexes. Therefore, at tier 5++ with 20 reflexes, we'd get an 11 second duration and 30 second cooldown, which I suppose can technically go lower if we're also neutralizing lots of enemies with the axolotl cyberware. Now that sounds much better, right? And yeah, it is, but by the time you've reached that point, far better alternatives will be available to you. No, this is now pretty much exclusively an earlier game Sand Everston, providing a small but welcome boost for occasional use in combat. It does do an okay all-round job and is probably best suited to offer sharpshooter support at lower levels. Though on the whole, compared to other entries I found, it just doesn't hold up. It didn't offer the versatility to dive in and out of combat frequently, like others, and with close quarters melee especially on very hard, it was only by the grace of using blade finishes that I could possibly survive such ordeals, not this Sand Everston. Up next then is the GNT Warp Dancer. Now, whilst this company absolutely dominated the Sandy game prior to 2.0 with this and the Mark IV, my god has the Warp Dancer fallen from grace, in a sense. No longer the supreme device for pure time slowing, Warp Dancer now more resembles a berserk of sorts, masquerading in the family of Sandys. With its super long cooldown ranging from 70 to 50 seconds, and the fact it only slows time by a mere 20%, it's clear that this one has different priorities, and indeed its primary function now is more to serve as a damage mitigation and resistance tool, with an actual decent 30-50% to resistance to thermal, chemical and electrical damage, as well as up to 24% mitigation chance and 12% mitigation strength. Mitigation by the way is a twofold damage negation bonus, which remains active at all times. Mitigation chance dictates how likely each hit will get a mitigation bonus, whilst mitigation strength determines how much of the damage from that hit will be negated. It's essentially a role to save from tabletop games, as I understand it. So with all that in mind, alongside the admittedly decent duration of between 9 to 12 seconds, the best use of this I can think of is as a combat support device, not necessarily activated when going on the offensive, but rather when escaping tight situations, like here in this particularly heated encounter with the Voodoo Boys. Using the Sandy won't therefore give much of a time slow, but you will take less damage when it's active just like a Berserk. Of course, where this wins over the new Berserks themselves is in the fact that you can still, if you want, use guns, whilst Berserks now are regulated to melee weapons only, but do make you utterly invincible for a short time. Perhaps, therefore, this thing is best reserved for an LMG build, say. After all, gunfire won't be slowed by much at all, and you'll be able to stand at advantage point for longer, simply laying into hordes of gang members. Again, it doesn't feel like a tremendously useful benefit across a big fight 
compared to some of the other Sandys, but definitely worth having as opposed to not when you're under fire. Especially earlier on in the game when you haven't unlocked the Falcon or Apogee yet. The Warp Dancer is available from tier 3 onwards, so level 20 plus I believe. Potentially worth grabbing therefore for an up close and personal Sandy user, beginning a new playthrough at the shortcut start of Phantom Liberty. It's also got the lowest cyberware capacity of just 14. Though I'd say the marginally higher cost of the next one on that front is still the superior early game choice, depending. Despite not even receiving a legendary tier in previous versions, Zeta Tech Sandys have always stood out to me as underrated but brilliant. And whilst, unlike last time, this isn't a secondary stand-in for the Chien T Mark IV, it is, in my opinion, the superior of the three earlier games and Everstons. Of course, nothing on the next two, but hear me out as to why you should run with this one until you hit level 30 and tier 4 unlocks. First up, this thing has a really decent cooldown, right from the get-go of just 45 seconds a stat which can be potentially reduced all the way down to just 20, whilst duration can increase from 6 seconds all the way up to 12. Is it an endless Sand Everston? No, far from it, but in my testing it was certainly the most notable and useful one of the first three in combat, and part of that is down to the fact that the Zeta Tech encourages you to use it in a certain way. You see, on the ground it provides a fairly poor 30% time slow alongside a worth having small damage increase, but when V is in mid-air, time instead slows by 60%. The damage doubles and we get a massive boost to headshot weak spot damage as well. On top of that, falling from greater heights is going to be fine, given the 30% reduction in fall damage. Now, granted, lining up shots in mid-air is significantly more difficult than from standing, and using this one with melee weapons, doing stupid looking jump hits, is actually worthwhile. But here's the thing, because after practicing with this one for a while, lining up perfect shots and tomahawk throws as I fell towards the ground, I genuinely felt like my moving aim was slowly improving, and I feel like using this at lower levels for lack of anything better can give you a lot of time to seriously improve on that skill, also reaping the stat benefits from doing so. I think especially if you're going for a blade thrower or gunslinger build, this is certainly a useful placeholder to have until you unlock the superior sandies, and still only costs a reasonable but slightly higher 20 in cyberware capacity. In fact, it was using this one that I finally understood why they removed the epic fortified ankles, aka the hover legs, because otherwise that would have created an utterly overpowered combo of some floating godlike build who's just really good at getting headshots. Goddamn you CDPR, noticing exploits before we do. That said, as we move on now, you'll notice that Zeta Tech's mid-air stats are actually only marginally better than the remaining two Sandys, which serve as only high level rewards unlocked at level 30 and 40 plus. However, as I say, before reaching that level, Zeta Tech, in my opinion, is the most powerful and fun Sand Everston to use. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the final two utterly goated Sand Everstons. The creme de la creme of 2.0 and one of my favourite overall ways to play. Both of these are Miller Tech Sandies and let's start off first with the Falcon. First available at tier 4 or level 30, this thing offers the game changing ability to not only turn off but also turn on at any time, provided there's some cooldown remaining in the tank. Granted, it will only last as long as the charge you have remaining after that, but this feature feature opens up a whole new world of more versatile combat applications. Not only this, but the Falcon also slows time by a whole 70%, almost on par with the old TNT Mark IV and offering a nice feeling of familiarity. Base cooldown ranges from 40 to 30 seconds alongside an 8 second duration, though of course with toggling on and off at will, this is literally just a balance ratio, denoting that the Sandy can be used a whole quarter of the time essentially. I love using this one with single shot high powered weapons, and activating it in the moment before firing not only offers a cool slow-mo effect, but also 10% extra base damage, crit chance, and crit damage, at tier 5 anyway. Plus, there's a very useful 10% extended duration and a 5% health increase every time you neutralize an enemy. Pair that with the reflex attuned duration boost in a scenario when you're killing lots of enemies, and this thing should pretty much remain available throughout the entire fight, provided you activate it conservatively and only 
only for brief stints when firing. Not the same endless sand devastin as we had before, but I feel like this is kind of a CDPR compromise on the build that we loved so much. That said, these top tier sandies do also come at the cost of using about double the cyberware capacity of others. Meaning, unless you are heavily specced into tech or a very high level, you are going to have to forego some of the other supporting cyberware for your sandy build. Though in my tests, I've definitely found a toggle on and off at Will Sand Everston to be far more valuable than any passive armor increase or other more notable effects. Don't get me wrong, everything definitely feeds in as a useful buff, most of which you'll notice, sure. But nothing is quite as powerful as being almost able to stop a fight at will when you're in trouble, lining up a shot, or just want to get some extra swings in. So use this with guns, in the on-off way I've described, or just use it with blades, in the more classic drain it till it's gone method. After all, you are getting a damage bonus with this too. Don't remember that now in 2.0, you are going to be beholden to stamina limitations, and can't take a ridiculous number of endless swings each second like you could before. Is the sandy sword combo still good? Yes, but defo try it out with guns too, is all I'm saying. Of course, whilst this sandy may be an insane cut above the rest, we can actually still do it one better, with what actually is the same sandy used by the notorious David Martinez. The Militech Apogee, as the name would suggest, simply is the indisputably best Sand Everston. Superior to all predecessors, and I'd argue even better when used right than the TNT Mark IV, pretty much taking everything which makes the new Falcon great and providing improvements. Contextually, it serves as an off-record model produced at Luna Labs, which was never supposed to hit the public market, so quite how every ripper seems to be selling one to a level 40 plus V is interesting. To to say the least, especially given the rarity of this particular model in Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Still, I guess gameplay and lore have to compromise somewhere. Now, whilst this thing is only available at higher levels as I said, you have very little reason once acquiring one of these to ever go back, especially if you're running with blades as part of your build. With again the same thing of providing bonuses for neutralizing enemies, this one gives a major plus 20% to duration per kill, and instead of health this time, a plus 22% to stamina, making it slightly more oriented for offense than the Falcon by allowing you to inflict more attacks at once. What's more, it provides greater crit chance and damage than the Falcon and encourages headshots specifically by improving their damage too. Time is slowed to a whopping 85%, just 5 shy of the old Warp Dancer, but still landing us in essentially time-stopping Quicksilver territory. They actually allow you to play as David Martinez even more closely in this version of the game, and I am absolutely here for it. Again, using this thing by toggling it on and off at the appropriate moments feels very much like one of those badass movie action sequences. You know, the ones that keep switching to and from slow-mo for certain moments. Mission Impossible 2 springs to mind, a spy movie, as it happens. So not only does this Sandy allow you to fulfill your David Martinez roleplay dreams, but it can also make Phantom Liberty feel even more like a spy thriller than it already was. At tier 5, its cooldown is going to be 30 seconds, so it stands to reason that tier 5 plus plus would be a mere 20. Pair that with the 10 second duration 20 reflexes and this one can be active for essentially a third of the time, if not more, provided you're taking out enemies in said time. Sure, 44 cyberware capacity is the heftiest price of the bunch, but this laid into the game it shouldn't be a problem and is absolutely worth it. Insanely, insanely fun to use and on balance quite definitively the number one Sand Everston in the game. But do you agree or does the fact that it's such a late game unlock mean you mostly prefer a different one? Let me know in the comments down below and also tell me what you want to see ranked next. We have a lot of ground to cover, pretty much all my old ranking videos have been rendered obsolete now, so I'm going to be slowly working my way through the new ones, though be warned, it will take a while. As always, huge thanks to the amazing supporters over on Patreon for supporting me and delivering even more content like this to YouTube. And of course, thank you for watching. I'm Sam Bram and I'll see you very, very soon in another video.